I'm Dr. J. Mack, and these are the most searched emergency doctor questions on the internet. How long do you have to train to become an ER doc? How long do you have to train to become an ER doctor? Well, you basically, after high school, end up training as much as you trained to do life before then. <laughs> so um, after you graduate high school, you have to do four years of undergraduate. This is all in the US four years of med school, and then three to four years of residency afterward. And, you know, after eight years of training, you know, this again, this is after high school, I was so sick of training and I was so ready to be out on my own that I basically only applied to residency programs that would be three years because I was ready to get on with my life. <laughs> so 11 years total for me after high school. How many hours does an ER doctor work in a typical shift? How many hours does an ER doctor work in a typical shift? It really depends on what type of emergency room you're working in. If you're working in like a sleepy rural emergency department, you may only see 12 people in 24 hours. So for those particular locations, you may work a 24 hour shift. But if you're working in a dense urban, emergency room where you're seeing i mean like 20 patients in like three to five hours those shifts need to be a lot shorter in the more high volume high acuity emergency departments again which are typically in urban settings you'll have way more doctors staffing throughout the day you know you'll kind of clock in clock out uh, on a much more rapid basis how long before a shift does an er doctor wake up um that's a great question so i personally will wake up like 30 minutes before a shift get a cup of joe in my hand and go right into the er coffee only no breakfast just go how does an er doctor get his hair so good <laughs> um so how does an er doctor get his hair so good i'm sure this is one of the most commonly asked uh internet questions for doctors but um you know, I wake up and I go like this. And you got what you have right here. <laughs> I'm actually serious about that. My hair, I literally, I did my hair every single day for like a decade. I put um, like wax in it basically, like pomade and stuff. And my wife thought it was gross to have like junk in my hair because then she couldn't like run her fingers through it. Um, and uh, and she just asked me to stop putting stuff in it. And I was like, no, because it's part of who I am. My hair is my identity. And I stopped putting stuff in it and it just kept doing this. So then I just kept not putting stuff in it. And uh, what I think actually happened is that I quote unquote trained my hair. And this is actually a thing, right? That's it's the, the chemistry behind perms. When you do a perm, um, you can take straight hair and make it curly. And I have essentially taken my hair and made it wavy <laughs> in this direction. And it's because of um, uh, sulfide bonds, actually. I believe it's disulfide bonds that, uh, that create that. Can an ER doctor pull a tooth? <laughs> can an ER doctor pull a tooth? I mean, can I? Yes, I can. Should I? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I should not be pulling teeth. I'm not a dentist. We're not trained for this. And it's actually not even dentists that pull teeth. It's a lot of times it's a certification above that, like oral maxillofacial surgeons um, and, and other certifications, I believe, are credentialed to pull teeth. So that's actually an invasive surgery that I am not going to do in the emergency department. However, people come into the emergency department with pain all the time. Dental pain is one of the worst pains you could possibly feel. So people come in at like three in the morning, they're holding their tooth. It makes grown men cry. And I'm able to give them um, basically a numbing shot. We call it a, um, a dental block, also known as a nerve block that numbs up the entire lower row. So if you're having pain anywhere on this lower row, I'll give a shot. It's the inferior alveolar nerve that I'm numbing up and they'll be almost completely pain-free. Same thing goes for the upper row, except I have to separate it into two different locations where I do the shot. I can do the superior anterior alveolar nerve by doing a block right up here, injecting a medicine called lidocaine or bupivacaine, marcaine is, is another word. Um, and then the superior posterior alveolar nerve, we can block here um, to get that back 
row of teeth up high. But people love it. And the, the cool thing about these blocks is that these nerves block lasts for about eight hours. So somebody comes in at maybe like 10 p.m. and I'm like, hey, you want a good night's sleep tonight? Go time. Does an ER doctor give medical advice to their friends? Um, the legal answer to this is no. The actual answer to this is all day, every day. Everybody's texting me, sending me pictures. What's this rash? I'm like, dude, I'm not a dermatologist. I went to school to be an emergency doctor, not just a skin doctor. If it's one of like, you know, the common skin rashes that we deal with, I got those easy. But you know, there are a bajillion different things that go wrong with the skin. People do, you know, a three to five year training for certain dermatological conditions. So don't come to me with your disgusting rashes, okay? But besides that, people always text me or call me and they're like, hey, look at this cut. Should I go to the ER? Does this need stitches? Is this broken? The arm's like hanging off. I'm like, yes, it's broken or dislocated. Go, go, go. People call me with the most obvious things that need to go to the ER. They just need that confirmation because they know it's so expensive in the US when they go to the ER. What does an ER doctor eat? Off shift, I eat anything. On shift in the ER, I eat efficiently. I need something that I don't need to wash my hands before I eat and I need something that can be just like digested within a couple minutes. So a lot of times I'll have, you know, like um, some string cheese or something that I can open up the packet, not have to actually touch the cheese and just like uh, munch down on. <laughs> or if I'm feeling uh, particularly indulgent, I'll have some blueberries, actually wash my hands first and eat those. But it's nothing that I'm going to prepare or take time, you know, to actually get ready because in one moment in the ER, I'm responsible for taking care of anyone from five or any number um, from five to 25 patients. And so there's like this juggling process that's happening. And there are so many interruptions every second from nurses, from patients, from consultants calling um, that it needs to be a food that you just can down and, and get on with your shift. Can an ER doctor refuse to treat a patient? Can an ER doctor refuse to treat a patient? No, we're actually held legally uh, responsible for anyone who walks into the emergency department. It doesn't matter what your insurance status is. It doesn't matter what your socioeconomic status is. Um, legally, I'm bound to take care of every patient that walks into the emergency room, at least do what's called a medical screening exam and make sure there's no emergency condition present. But I love that because I wanna take care of everybody. I don't wanna just like pick and choose what patients I take care of, depending on how much money they make or how much money they have in the bank. I'm doing this because I wanna help people. Um, it helps, you know, when the hospital gets paid and then can also pay me for the time and effort that I put in. Um, but patients all the time are like, oh, I, don't, I don't have insurance or this and that. And I'm like, I don't care, man, don't tell me. That's on somebody else. Can an ER doctor operate on a family member? The answer is yes, we can, but should we? Absolutely not. I do take care of friends and friends of friends because it's inevitable. I live in the town that I grew up in and my ER is like five blocks away from the high school that I went to. So I do end up taking care of people that I know, but that's very different than taking care of a family member. I'll help family members out with little things here and there, but if there's an intense procedure or a family member is actually very ill, um, I need someone else to take care of that because I don't want any part of my brain, not even during the procedure itself or during their treatment course, I need to be free of guilt for the rest of my life, regardless of the outcome for that patient. Because what if they die? What if they get seriously injured for the rest of their life, either from the procedure or from the illness itself? Am I always going to wonder, was that my fault? Should I have done something better? And, uh, and, and I don't need that kind of guilt weighing on me for the rest of my life. I, I want to maintain that pure relationship and that pure um, love and, uh, and mutual respect. Were all ER doctors previously in a boy band? So the question is, were all ER doctors previously in a boy band? And the answer is yes. Embarrassing fact, Dr. J. Mack was actually in a boy band at one point. Look at him, ha ha ha. Do ER doctors sleep on shift? 
If you're in a facility where you're seeing a ton of patients in a very short amount of time, absolutely not. You are never sleeping on shift, but you could be working in a small, sleepy ER in a rural setting. In those settings, you may be working a 24 hour shift. Sometimes doctors will work a 48 hour shift in ERs like this, but you're sleeping sporadically throughout the day, throughout the night. I've done 24 hour shifts where I sleep 10 hours at night, wake up and be like, woo. <laughs> All right, guys, those are the most searched questions for emergency doctors. If you loved it like I know you did, smash that subscribe button and uh, we'll have a lot of fun doing these videos in the future.